guys, what's going on? This is Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. What's going on, guys? Today we're going to talk about not legendary, not epic, or not even rare champions. We're going to talk about my three favorite uncommon champions inside the game. Really the only three uncommons that I would advise people really invest in and max out. We're going to talk about where we're using these champions and, of course, how to build them. You can check out the timestamps on the timeline of this video to go. We're going to go through them kind of one at a time. But first, I do want to give a couple shouts to the champions that we're not going to talk about. Some of the common names uh, for uncommon champions. 90% of the time, I have no idea what the f I'm talking about. That you hear thrown out there as well. These uncommon champions have been somewhat a victim of power creep, right? It used to be back in the day that you can justify building, you know, Sniper, for example. But now Sniper, I mean, Dark Elhane is a lot better. She's a starting champion. And then, you know, there's a lot of other better damage dealers out there than Sniper. Although she does put out for an uncommon champion some decent damage. Other champions champions too. Let's see, who do I have built here? We have Outlaw Monk. Outlaw Monk, again, if you're looking for a poison damage dealer, certainly I would not advise maxing him out though anymore. It used to be if you don't choose Kale as your starting champion, you might be hurting in terms of poison in the game. So you could invest in Outlaw Monk because on his A2, he has two big uh, versions of poison. The only problem is he's very tough to keep alive. He has 694 and 1200 HP and defense as his base stats. So really not widely used outside the early levels of clan boss. So Outlaw Monk, sure, take him to level 50 if you need to ha some poison help in the early game, but that's about it. The other, only other one I wanted to give a shout out to is actually better than Outlaw Monk, and uh, and she is Zephyr Sniper. So she's a Barbarian. Let's go ahead and take a look. Zephyr Sniper. I think she's better than Sniper too, personally. She has an AoE on her A1, and then she has a 30% chance when booked of increasing the duration of a random skill on each target by one turn. She has the weak version of Continuous Heal, and she has 100 base speed. This is on a four-turn cooldown. It's not a great healing ability, but again, this Suppressive Fire is a pretty decent A1, uh, and she's damage is based on defense, so it's much easier to keep alive as well. So Zephyr Sniper would be my, my one big shout-out who's not included in these champions. There's actually a couple decent uh, options here. One of these dudes, uh, Outrider Outlander, hits pretty hard as well. But, but you know, guys, the main point here is, is at this point in 2021 in Raid Shadow Legends, these are the big three. These are the big three. Oh. And you could even argue that maybe, maybe not everybody needs these three champions. That's where we're going to talk about where we use them. Let's start with Saurus. So Saurus is going to be the most niche out of the three champions we're going to talk about today. A lizard man uncommon champion. And he is a campaign farmer but a very easy uh, champion to upgrade. Same thing with all of these uncommons. The reason they're still worth it, in my opinion, is because they're super easy. You open mystery shards, you can book them using dupes. Anybody can get their hands on enough uncommon duplicates to book these up. Don't waste your rare books, guys. And heck, one of these champions just campaign farmable as well. So Soros is special because he has the AoE on the A1 and an AoE two-time hitter on his A2. Don't get me wrong, neither of these abilities hit incredibly hard. Masteries are unnecessary on Soros as a campaign farmer. However, I would farm a couple battles just to get crit rate and crit damage, uh, most importantly on Keen Strike and Deadly Precision. Now, in terms of artifacts, the big key to him is we only care about three stats. That's all we care about is his, his attack, his crit rate, and his crit damage. That is it. That is all we care about. We don't even care about speed with one little, you know, addendum here. And that is, he needs to be faster than Lord Shazar for, to be a campaign farmer. Meaning, I think Lord Shazar is 103? Yeah. We'll double check on that. But he needs to be faster than Lord Shazar for 12-3 Brutal. As long as he is, he's going to go first because that's the fastest champion on the enemy team. So, I say all that to say this. Put attack percentage boots on this fella, right? Attack percentage on the boots and the chest and then crit damage on the gauntlets is going to be a good way to get him doing enough damage so that he kills everybody on 12-3 Brutal. Otherwise, without the attack percentage, really for any campaign farmer you use, whether it is Source or anybody else, as long as they're only your campaign farmer, we'll go ahead and put attack percentage on their boots. I do the same thing with Queen Ava, but... 
One could argue that Soros is even better than Queen Ava. He averages around seven seconds, whereas Queen Ava averages around eight seconds as a campaign farmer. Uh, so, you know, this isn't really a, uh, a thorough guide on all the campaign farmers in the game, but uh, Fellhound obviously is really the best when it comes to campaign farming, can do six seconds. So, crit damage on the amulet as well, and attack again on that banner, a good source of speed if you guys need it to get that 83 above Lord Shazar as well. That's basically it, guys. A pretty Pretty easy champion to go ahead and build. Let's take him into the campaign and, well, farm with him, right? The other two champions, by the way, I'm not trying to tease you and wake you guys wait until the end of the video, are going to be Shield Guard and Armager. Uh, here he is in the lead here. Uh, he doesn't have an aura, so if you're farming a champion with an aura, might as well go ahead and use that, right? Uh, these resist is not going to help me that much. So let's just go ahead and go in with this. We're on 12-3, brutal. They added the difficulty now there. That's nice. That's nice. So we continue, and here we go. About to see a second, a seven-second campaign farmer on an uncommon champion. That's his A2, boom, dead. Here's his A1, boom, dead. And here we go, A1, and... Hey there. Sorry for dropping in. Was it cool? It felt really cool. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> so it's eight seconds because he, he, he missed his shot on one of the last uh, champions, but uh, maybe getting his crit damage up a little bit more uh, or his attack a little bit more and that won't happen. But you guys get the point, right? Eight second campaign farmer from an uncommon champion who's very easy to upgrade is the takeaway from Soros. All right, let's go ahead and show you the next one on the list, guys. And it is, oh man, I am such a huge fan of Shield Guard. You thought I was going to say Armager because everybody loves Armager because why wouldn't you, right? But Shield Guard, first of all, he's campaign farmable in the Dreadlands. I think that's stage nine, I believe. Uh, so anybody can pull him uh, through just campaign farming and you can upgrade him and get him uh, again, fully booked easily through campaign farming. Lifesteal is going to be your best friend on Shield Guard, guys. We're going to talk about where we use him, but first let's look at what he does. His damage is based on defense. He has a decreased speed weak version on his A1. On his A2, Two, this battle stands, man. That is where it's at. Two turn cooldown attacks all enemies, fills this champion turn meter by 20% on each critical hit. What? He can do some really amazing things. He's one of the few champions in the game as an uncommon. I mean, forget about being an uncommon. Just one of the few champions out there who can solo Nightmare campaign, like Nightmare 12-3. He can solo that in Lifesteal gear, okay? Uh, we also have remove one debuff from this champion each turn. I do have masteries on this champion. We have War Master on him as our tier six option. We also have Retribution, so we can counterattack uh, utilizing some of that uh, decreased speed, or I should say uh, landing some extra decrease speed off of his A1. So for this champion, again, Lifesteal Gear is really going to help you guys out. I'm a little bit shy. We want that crit rate 100 or higher. Uh, defense 4K and speed a little slow there, 152, but he can still get the job done. So why would you want to invest in Shield Guard? I mean, who cares if he can solo Nightmare, right? Uh, I'll show you the rest of the gear too here. Crit damage, defense, and speed. And then we have crit damage and defense on the banner. And again, obviously defense on the ring. And substats here, we're looking for obviously the normal stuff. Defense, crit rate. Uh, for the most part, crit rate, a little bit of speed too. Uh, attack doesn't really do anything, so we don't need to fully upgrade this uh, this weapon. It won't really, you know, matter on Shield Guard. So why would you invest in Shield Guard? Well, first of all, he's one of the best uh, kind of uh, scroll farmers in the game here in Minotaur's Labyrinth. So check it out, right? He can solo. So let's just say I was working on, uh, who am I working on? Let's just go back to Gurgo the Augur. So let's say I was working on his masteries and I didn't want to split it amongst a bunch of champions. I just wanted to kind of farm with Shield Guard. Obviously, you can fill the team out with extra damage dealers and go even faster. I use Shield Guard, an uncommon champion, on my main Faction Wars team as well because he puts out a lot of damage. Here's his A2, and you can see full turn meter goes right back into his A1. You know what, guys? I lied. I want to take Gurgo the Augur out because I don't want to cheat here. I don't want any help. I don't want any help with Shield Guard. Shield Guard, get out of here. Get out of here, man. All right, there we go. Shield Guard's got this on solo. And so he can solo farm and he's pretty good against bosses who have a couple minions. A la, you know, the Ice Golem, right? So 
So what he's going to do there with the Ice Golem is uh, he's going to get that, you know, 40, 60% turn meter fill because he's landing three critical hits. So he's already goes into his A2, which is already on a two turn cooldown and boom, he gets right back to it right there. So uh, using him on Ice Golem is also beneficial. Just be careful because he can put out a lot of damage. Uh, so here we go. Boom, boom. We're already at the boss. And I mean, full health or close to. He's a pretty interesting champion. And again, he goes right. You saw it right there, right? Goes into the A2. Boom. Full turn meter. Boom. A1. A2. Back off cooldown. Boom. Full turn meter. You guys get the point. That's why War Master is nice on him because he's using his A1 so often because he's always filling his own turn meter. He's a really cool uncommon champion, right? He's better than a lot of rare champions. He's more useful than, than a lot of rare champions and most rare champions, right? That's why we're kind of pinpointing the three uh, uncommons you can really get a lot of value out of. Have any of you guys invested in Shield Guard? If so, where do you use him? Do you use him anywhere outside of where I mentioned? Let me know, of course. You can use him as a campaign farmer. He's not going to be as fast as the AoE attackers, though. But again, with that turn meter fill, he can do, you know, just as well or if better in some situations uh, than the, the starting champions, right? Than, than a Kale, for example. I wouldn't build him just as a campaign farmer, personally. There's better options out there. But again, you guys can see, I mean, he's holding down the fort, right? And he's, again, damage based on defense on this champion, so he's not squishy. He's easy to keep alive. He can take a hit, especially important as an uncommon champion so there we go that shield guard no big deal no big deal all right let's go ahead and talk about the most uh, popular and really the most end game viable uncommon champion inside the entire game of raid shadow legends a quick kind of uh you know i don't even want to call it a rant but plarium if you're watching i know you are how about give us another cool uncommon champion? It's been a while. It's been a long, long while. Give us another cool uncommon champion. They don't need to be beasts in every area of the game, but maybe one or two areas of the game. Give us a really cool uncommon, uh, you know, a new champion. It's been a while. It's been a while since we had a good rare addition to the game. This connection is so rickety. Hello? What? Mama, you in the window. I'm sorry, what? We not on no cell phone, Mama. I, I can't hear you, baby. I can't hear Oh, my. Mama. <laughs> Here it is. Armager has a decreased turn meter by 30% on his A1. On his A2, again, a two-turn cooldown. Enemies killed cannot be revived. So he has this based on enemy max HP and defense. It can deal a lot of damage on a two-turn cooldown. We're talking about over 100,000 damage against bosses. Even more than that, depending on the gear that you have on him. Armager's really special uh, because not only the 30% turn meter, you know, decrease on the A1, which is using every other turn uh, in combination with later rest, but also you can put him in destroy gear and you're getting a hard-hitting decrease enemy max HP by, what is it again? 40% of damage dealt after the buff to destroy, you're getting that every other turn. Well, you're getting it every other turn on the hard hitting ability, and then you still get it on the A1 with the turn meter decrease. So he's bringing a lot to the table against not just Scarab King, who a lot of people find the most challenging or one of the most challenging Doom Tower bosses, but really against any boss. Even on Ice Golem too, he can block revive on the minions of the Ice Golem himself. So Armager again, damage based on defense, just like we talked about on Shield Guard. So he's much easier to keep alive other common and uncommon champions and even rare champions if their damage is not based on hp or defense it's very difficult as you progress in the mid game in the end game to keep these dudes alive right so in terms of masteries we went with war master as the tier six option on this champion and again we're trying to get that retribution we're trying to get him to counter attack for more turn meter decrease on the a1 this guy is used not just in scarab king and destroy gear but not just an ice golem for the block revive on his A1, but also, or his A2 rather, but also against the spider because he's doing a lot of damage with that A2 on a two turn cooldown. We've seen some teams that are essentially just like four or five Armagers versus the spider getting the job done. Armager is definitely the most versatile, really not even close, uh, uncommon champion inside the entire game. Now, I would love to show him against uh, this, uh, uh, the, the Scarab King, I was gonna say Spider, against Scarab King, 
However, unfortunately, Doom Tower, even though the Sc uh, Scarab King is there, I don't have it unlocked because the new rotation just started. But again, Destroy Gear is going to be your best friend if you do have him against the Scarab King. Don't look at my build, guys. Shame on me. Very low on the crit rate at 79. We really want that 100% on Armager on that crit rate. Crit rate, crit damage, defense, and some speed are going to be priorities. It's a little bit more difficult to build as compared to Shield Guard uh, because we do need that accuracy. Of course, Shield Guard does need accuracy to land his A1, but it is the weak version of decreased speed. So hopefully you have another champion that you can kind of use on the same team. Maybe it's still the Drakes or the big version of decreased speed as well on your team. But this more necessary, the accuracy on, on Armager. So 278 is okay, but I really want over. 300 for Doom Tower hard, especially against those higher level Scarab Kings. I really want, you know, around 350. Uh, so I could use a little bit of work on this build crit rate in accuracy and maybe stand to sacrifice some of my support stats or just find better gear overall to put on him. Now, if you don't use, if you're not using him just on Scarab King, of course, you can still run him in destroy gear. There's nothing wrong with using destroy gear in other areas of the game, or you can just go to maximize his crit damage for like one shotting the spider or just doing a lot of damage to the spider or just stacking up on his defense and speed gear. Pretty much have a few options regarding how you're building your armagers so guys there it is those are the top three uncommon champions in the game and how you can use them how you can build them let me know which is your favorite i am assuming a lot of you guys are going to choose armager but i really want to hear from you guys in the comment below and who did i leave out right is there another champion i didn't even mention who you guys are a big fan of as an uncommon option in the game let me know in the comments below guys thank you so much for watching and as always take care guys